The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Open 2.0. I am your host Ramon Torres and we've got a great show for you today. Today's segment focuses on special class who writes letter about our community. Mr. Andrew Cavagnaro, an elementary school teacher at PS369, developed a project that his classes work on every year. The letters are made to send to the community members and community leaders. Here to tell us more, Mr. Andrew Cavagnaro, his students Olivia and Chris. And we also have the whole class here. How are you today? Good. Doing all right. Good. Doing all right? Mm -hmm. yep. So, Andrew, tell us a little bit about PS369. Yeah, we are a close-knit learning community. We're a very collaborative group. The vision of our school is creating young leaders, and that's the vision of our principal, Jalila Cook, our assistant principal, Caroline Mordecai, and all of the teachers. It's a place where children have a voice and a place where we want to build their skills for the future. The school has a, a has a title, right? It's it's uh, leaders. Yes, PS three six nine Young Leaders Elementary School. Young leaders. Yeah. Do you feel like young leaders? Yep. Yes. Yes. What is your favorite subject at the school? My favorite subject is math, and I like math because usually when people do math, it like it gets their grades higher and it can make them a better person. How about you, Chris? Um, my favorite subject is also math, too, because um, I learn new stuff every day, and uh, I use strategies to help me solve problems, like word problems and um, like fractions and multiplication. You two are very talented. I can see that. So my next question was going to be what makes the school stand out, but they definitely stand out. Yeah, no, there's a, a bunch of different things. You know, it's the leadership mindset these students have, and also within the school, these children are self-assessing their own work. They have voice and how our lessons are structured, and they have choice in their own learning. So it's a really powerful learning community. What kind of clubs and programs does the school provide? Oh, we have a bunch. We have debate team. We have a girls' empowerment movement. We have different sports teams. We have student government. So it's an ever-growing list with a lot of opportunities for the kids. What are your favorites of those? My favorites are the debate team and student government. How about you, Chris? Mine's is debate team because it's really fun to learn, and I like to argue about stuff. So, how did the how did the this project start? The letters. So this started last year with my prior class. So we had a new playground opened up right next to the school, and the kids were coming back from recess every day, finding different forms of litter, and they were very passionate about it. And we were coincidentally in a persuasive writing unit, so they wanted to take some action. So last year we wrote members to council, I mean letters to council member Ayala. And this year, the kids felt the same way within our persuasive writing unit, and we decided to not only take the next step of writing letters, but we had an opportunity to meet her earlier this week. So, Mr. Cavagnaro, how, how did, um, how does your background come into this? Have you done other social movements? Have you been a part of them? Yeah, in my own um, community in the Upper East Side, I attend community board meetings. I write letters to the local council members as well. So I try to model these behaviors to the students because when they're adults, these are the type of skills and these are the type of actions that are going to help change their community too, as well as my own. What do you think? Is it important to let your elected officials know about the problems in the community? Yeah. Yes. What, what do you say in, what do you think is important? Why do you think that? Because littering um, can be a big problem sometimes and it can get to the point where people can get hurt. Do you have any other topic other than littering? Um, like it's important? Um, homelessness because people um, obviously don't have shelter or food because um, they're homeless. Uh, they're homeless and um, 
I feel like we can like make a restaurant for them so that they can like um, go enter. So why why do you think it's important for uh, young students to learn from an early age all of the all of this? Yeah, activism is super important. The taking their own skills within the classroom is something that I wanted to show them that it's not just within the classroom they're going to use them, but outside the classroom. So during their persuasive writing and also the fact that they care so much about their community, they decide to take this action. And I think it's important because as we all get older and you both become adults too, you're going to be able to do this kind of work as well to create positive change in your community. What is the ultimate goal for this project? So the ultimate goal for the project, and you could speak, what were the two or three things that we were hoping for? Um, we were hoping that the, cha um, the change starts now and our community starts to get better and cleaner. Um, our ultimate goal is to stop littering, um, stop homelessness, and stop um, hunger. And then within the meeting, too, they were asking the council member to put in our budget larger trash bins mm -hmm. because some of the trash bins in the neighborhood have been overflowing, they're short, to put more trash bins around the neighborhood. And they were also invited to be a part of a cleanup effort at some point this spring. So thank you so much for all this information. We're gonna take a short break. Thank you. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> Welcome back to Open 2.0. We are here with our guests from PS369. How are you feeling? Good. Good, good. good. Well. So we want to continue off with the topic about the letters, the letters to elected officials. Could you tell us how the topics are chosen? I know you already mentioned topics that you are very passionate about, but is it, are, do the students pick the topics? Do you talk it out? Do you? So about three months ago, we, we brainstormed different topics and different issues that were important to them. So littering, hunger, and homelessness came up. That coincided with service learning curriculum that we had. So what the students did was they researched each topic and then they were able to choose after researching and their own personal feelings about each issue, they decided which topic they wanted to write to the council member about. And they led their own groups too and their own research together. So how do you, do students have experience of writing letters or, or what other writing skills do you use for them? Um, I think we so what we did was we, we talked it out, then we wrote it, we did answer detail detail, and we used a mini story, like we saw something happening in, based on our topic, and then um, why is it bad because our statement. How about you, Chris? Um, one of the strategies we use is like, um, in our writing, we use like evidence or mini stories to like help us like prove our point. So like, you just uh, reaffirmed what your teacher had said. Research. You did research and you learned, and you and you produced. Uh, you saw a problem and you want to solve it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do the students work in pairs? Do the, is it all individually? The, are their letters personal? So yeah, so we had a little bit of a process. They started within three different groups, about five or six students, and they researched and had their own discussion leaders and different jobs within them. They created questions about each topic, and then from there, they did a cause and effect activity to try to figure out what was the cause of these issues, and then what is the effect it is on the people in the community. From there, they went on their own, picked their own independent topic, started writing about it, and within partnerships, they edited and proofread their their um, essays together. Can you tell us a little bit about your letter? Um, my letter is about littering, and I chose littering because littering. I see a lot of trash, and now I just think it's it's been a long time now, and we should fix it. How about you, Chris? Um, my letter is about littering because um, every single time I come back from school or like come back from um, 
like from the train and then I see like garbage um all, all over the train and and when I come home I see like garbage and plastic bags um in my apartment. So Mr. Carnaro you told me that uh, during the break that littering was a big issue in the area where your school is located, Mott Haven. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, obviously we, last year we're, when this all started, it was the littering within the playground area. The kids were finding different forms of trash and garbage within the playground that they felt was unsafe. And then also they communicated to me walking to school, something they saw, and even myself walking out of the subway tunnel. So that's where a lot of this came from. That was the foundation for predominantly a litter-heavy persuasive writing unit. So who have you been sending these letters to? I know you mentioned earlier uh, the visit you had uh, with a council member. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more? Have you sent it to other council members, other elected officials? So we sent letters to council member Diana Ayala, and Diana Ayala had the students over this week, and she allowed the kids to have 30 minutes with her for Q&A to discuss these issues. Now we are definitely not done from there, we started with the city council. We'll be working towards the state level to hope in an effort to make sure their community is as clean as possible. How has been the response? How was Diana Ayala's uh, response with the students and with these letters? She was absolutely terrific. She took a large portion out of her day to meet with the students. She gave each of them voice. They were each able to speak with her. And then she told them that she was going to try to put into the budget larger trash bins. She also invited them for a community cleanup with a bunch of stakeholders. And then she invited them in the spring for a celebration when and if these trash cans are put into the budget and purchased. How was that experience of meeting a council member? Um, it was amazing because we got to make a change um, at 9 or 10, and I was just so happy. How about you, Chris? Um, my experience was happy because I got to meet a city council member at such a young age, and I knew that... Um, I can make a change um, um, as nine years old. So how can the community uh, help you achieve your goals and also write letters? What, what can you say to the community? I just think that seeing these young leaders at eight, nine, and 10 years old in the fourth grade care so much about their community and the cleanliness and making it as safe as possible for them, I think that should be an inspiration. And I think a show like this is helping deliver their message out to the community, and we're hoping that it's just not us, that it's other classes, adults, and we all together as a community could bring about positive change. Anything you want to add, Chris and Olivia? Mm, I just think, I just think um, that it's amazing that this, this is now um, how we're doing it because Young Leaders and Elementary is a really good school, and I think everyone should go there because they really try to help kids that um, are needed, and they make kids feel like home. Okay, that is amazing words. We'd like to thank you, the students, Chris and Olivia, and Mr. Cavagnaro for ha being here today. I hope you had a wonderful time. We'd like to thank the school PS369 for joining us and you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our show and catch us back on the next Open 2.0. To take us out is Dylan Perra and Amanda Montalvo with their letters. Dylan Perra and Amanda Montalvo with their letters. Um, so we're going to be um, reading our letters and I'm going to start. Um, dear Council Member Ayala, I'm a student at PS369 and I'm very concerned about littering and trash in our town. Littering is bad because kids can copy what adults do and it's messy. One reason why littering is bad for our town is because ki kids can copy what adults do. For example, on November 31st on 149th Street, a kid and his mom were eating chips. When the mom was done, the, with the chips, she threw it on the ground. When the kid was done, he then threw it on the ground. The mom did not care at all. Another example is that when I saw teenagers and they were eating chips and drinking soda. When they were done, drink, when they were done all of them threw it. Another reason why littering is bad is because um, it's messy. 
For example, on October, I went to the store and I saw a trash bin overflowing and plastic was blowing our Surbrook Ave. Another example is when I went to 149th Street and I saw a lot of trash on the ground. No one picked it up. Thank you for your time and I look forward from hearing back from you. Um, so now I'm going to read my letter. Dear Council Member Ayala, I'm a student at PS369 and I want to help pick up trash because it can get worse for us. One reason is that our cities and towns can smell bad or look bad. Another reason is that it trash is bad because our sea animals can die. One day I saw a person throwing trash into the ocean and a turtle ate it. Another reason people should not throw trash is one time I was playing soccer with my friends. The next day we went outside and and the grass was full with dog poop. Thank you for your time and I hope you read it and enjoy it. Bye. Bye.